Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Claris FileMaker training course on how to build a custom CRM in 30 days. This training is designed primarily for beginners or those of you who need kind of a refresher with the Claris FileMaker platform. Over the course of 30 days, we're going to spend about an hour each day covering topics from the very basics of the Claris FileMaker platform in terms of the tools, the products, deployment, security, all those things you need to know about as you build a custom application. So keep in mind that towards the beginning of the training, the topics are more basic in nature. And as we get towards the end of the training, they're somewhat more advanced. I would say probably intermediate level topics. Now keep in mind this special part of this training is that while we're not only talking about the FileMaker platform, we're talking how you can rapidly customize an existing free CRM that you can download today. It's unlocked. So taking that CRM and customizing it to your organization's particular needs. Now, a couple important links to keep in mind. One is that if you need a copy of FM Starting Point, the free unlock CRM, visit fmstartingpoint.com and press the button. And then our system will shoot you an email with the current links to that CRM. If you're looking for additional FileMaker training, visit fmtraining.tv and press the bundles button. And that will allow you to get more of this highly animated and somewhat energetic training material to help you through the learning process with the Claris FileMaker platform. Lastly, if you have questions about the FileMaker platform or you're looking for some additional help, maybe some one-on-one -on -one coaching help, feel free to email us at support at rcconsulting.com. Today's conversation, we're going to continue the conversation about 30-day kind of a 30-day deep dive for beginners with emphasis on customizing a CRM. We're going to continue that conversation today. If you look at historically what we've been doing, if I go to the fmtraining.tv website, which is really amazing right here, you go to fmtraining.tv, you can see uh, live training here. You can kind of loosely see the upcoming broadcast schedule. Today and Friday are going to be Calvin Moseman. He's here with us. I'm going to pivot to him in just a moment, but he will be... Uh, he will be uh, talk, talking about two different important topics, one of which uh, there's been a lot of questions about the calendar and FM starting point. Uh, can you have, Calvin, I don't even know if you saw this or you did see it. Uh, can you have like uh, track people and maybe different pieces of equipment in the, in the calendar? Well, you know, like schedules for people, pieces of equipment, or maybe a conference room, right? Like the, if you go to Apple, some of these tech companies, they have conference rooms that they don't call, they don't call the conference room, conference room A, or B, they have conference room Beaver, te Beaver Tequila, because I've seen all sorts of crazy conference room names. Like, where are we going to meet for our executive review? We're going to go to Ace Ventura. Ace Ventura being uh, Jim Carrey over here. There's a conference room called Ace Ventura. They're named after all sorts of stuff. So we're going to talk about that today. Today is the calendar day. Friday is going to be on email, basic email in the FileMaker platform. Uh, this is a kind of a conversation we have on and off, but we're including it as part of this 30-day deep dive. I want to make sure you folks have kind of an idea about that, and that'll be Calvin again on Friday. Calvin Moseman, are you there? Are you there somewhere? God, I'm here. There. Oh, that's is that the voice of God or Calvin? Calvin. Just, just Calvin. Just Calvin today. All right. All right. Here's the here's the new material. So we we wanted to look at the calendar. And we're going to do two things today. We're going to take a high overview of the calendar that's being used in FM Starting Point. And then we're going to do an implementation. Somebody asked, how can we get the calendar to appear on the home screen? Yes. Yeah. The first question is, is, uh, is that if I start with a brand new blank FileMaker file, do I, have, do I get a calendar with that? And the answer is generally no. No. Not like this. This one's pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we built in a calendar in FM starting point. It's also available for you to bolt into your own solution. Um, and we do step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. If it comes up about the add-on kit, we won't want to, we can talk about that or the add-ons. We can talk about that. But that one basically was a copy of what we had done, but it's super, super, super limited, right? So that yeah. might come up as well. So. So let's start with the, we're doing two things today. We're looking at the calendar and just giving an overview of it. Then we're make, doing an, an customization where we want to see the calendar on the home screen. So let's go ahead and start off by just taking an overview of this. When you select the calendar button, it opens a new window and gives you this, uh, this uh, 
view of the calendar. So we can say add task and it gives you the uh, ability to have this add a task information, assign it to a project, an account and all these all this other stuff. And you can give it a percentage of completion, put some notes on it. We're going to call this new task one. And you'll notice that she appears right here on the current date. We'll say add another task. We'll call this one feed the dog. We're going to say walk the dog. And maybe find the dog. Okay, so we got some more, and you'll notice the we we see that that we've got one option option for today, feed the dog, and three more. You can click on that, and it'll pop up the whole day. If I expand the window, what's nice about this is that you'll start seeing more information there, and we can change our view. We can look at the week in the air, but we can also move these around. So it's real. This isn't some. This is a. This is something an interaction that you normally get in FileMaker, so that's cool. And we can click on one of these, it brings up the, the, the pop-up window, and we can make some adjustments to it. So the, uh, we can also, we have some filters by category. Now all the categories here are color categories. So let's give this one a color category. We'll give it the category of blue, say okay. And you'll notice it changed the blue color. We'll give another color, uh, give it a green color, and then we'll give it a hot orange color as well. So you can change the colors on these. That's really cool. And the uh, and by selecting uh, this option, you can add new categories and say select color. I'm going to select uh, this pink one, or maybe yeah, just say pink, pink. And so we got a new color on here called pink. Now, if I go over here, I can also change this to that my new color. So a lot of cool stuff we can do to categorize and assign these, these, these items. And now, now that we have them assigned to categories, we can filter and just see what we want. So, I've, and we can also filter by users once the uh, users are assigned. But uh, I have clients that use the, this calendar to assign project, different tasks or different events to different teams and team members, and then filter by those in different categories. And you can see a lot of different ways. That you can, can I ask this. a question? So yeah. is that the pink, isn't that where the, where you'd have the pink or the blue, isn't that where we could put like resources in there, like conference room, Beaver yeah. five or something, right? Yeah. So we could say, we, we could give this a category and say uh, conference room five or whatever we want to call it. Give it yeah. a color. That's such a boring name. Oh, that's horrible. Okay. So the uh, conference room um, 007. That's a little There we go. That's a little better. The, uh, so, we, so we can give it these uh, different colors, different names, and then assign them to it so we could see the different uh, uh, options. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the filters. So now we have all these options. For now we see all the, all the items. And so let's go ahead, we kind of gave an overview of how it works, but not, or a view of how to use it, not necessarily how it works. So if we go into layout mode, this is where some people can get scared. There's, it's not like a normal in FileMaker when you go into layout mode, you see a bunch of ob objects. This is all being handled in the in a web viewer. So we're interacting with the web viewer. The web viewer is interacting with FileMaker to change those records. So when you click on, when you look, when you're looking here, we're looking at web viewer. When I click on one of these things, uh, FileMaker is doing a find for the record that we created and displaying that in a in this layout. So if I go to layout mode here, we see something that's a little more familiar. We see fields, layout objects, etc not just a big web viewer. Now, all of, all, of the infam all of the display that we're showing here in the calendar is controlled over here in our settings where we have it, it, a JavaScript library that controls what we see. 
and you can kind of dig into the code and see what's going on. If can you I, really can want I make a to. suggestion here for some yeah. of our beginning people? So slide this left, pop a new browser, and let's go to fullcalendar.io. So what this is important to understand right here is that the calendar is not a Claris calendar. This calendar is created by this company, and it's kind of open source, but not really. They have a basic calendar that you see over here that's free. It's a web-based calendar. It has absolutely nothing, and I mean nothing, to do with FileMaker. So what we did is this is powered by HTML, JavaScript, a bunch of coding. We grab all the code over here that's on the right side. We go over to the left side, and we and from a basic perspective, we dump it into a web viewer. So go to layout mode real quick for me on the FileMaker side. That's a web viewer right there. Highlight that box. That is a box. It's a web page. It's got a bunch of code in it. The code we got from these folks over here on the right. Okay, pretty straightforward. What we did is we adapted their full calendar. So what it does is it comes over to the FileMaker side and it talks to FileMaker. It talks to FileMaker to get those four records that you see right there. It really is doing a search for everything on June. It comes back with four records of data. And so this web viewer, you're interacting with web viewer, which is an operating system capability. You're kind of inside FileMaker, but FileMaker isn't really aware of what you're doing. So what happens if Calvin grabs one of these and hold it and move it. Don't let go yet. Just bring it over there. The web viewer is saying, aha, you want to move it. We're about to move it. And when he lets go, the web viewer is going to send a signal in real time. In fact, if we want to pop this, eh, well, you can pop it there if you want, but there's a record somewhere. So if you pop the, where do we have a list of the activities or tasks, right? Where's that list at somewhere? We go to tasks. Okay, so here's, is this all the records? If we show the status toolbars. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch, uh, where's Walk the Dog? Where is Walk the Dog on the left? Walk the, walk the Dog, it's pink. It's really a bad one. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this from here. We're going to move it over here. And, but as he does that, move it, but hold the mouse down. He hasn't let go of the mouse. When he lets go of the mouse, we're going to watch right here. Go, Calvin. And it, it changed the date, and then it jumped it because this has a sort order on it automatically. So what we have is two-way communication between the calendar and FileMaker. So we control these items over here, which means that we control where things pop up over here. The calendar is just making sure that we uh, that it renders it correctly and it works uh, on Macs and Windows and Androids and all that kind of stuff, right? So, so Stu has a comment, and I want you to take a swing at this, Calvin, what you think yeah. about this comment. I don't. I get. I don't know how good Stu is. I'm just for the moment going to assume he's an intermediate developer. Um, he's more than a beginner. I don't know. He's a full super ninja like you. Stu says one more reason for me to increase my JavaScript knowledge. What is your response? To that is that something that is useful here? And I mean that honestly. I don't have an answer for Stu. Right? Yeah. I I don't personally know JavaScript because it came out after I was already in management and I never had a chance to really learn it. My job mm -hmm. is to plan you know, plan the ops, and, and Calvin is a shooter, so he goes and executes the ops, if that makes sense, right? You Marsat guys, right? So, um, yeah, so being somewhat familiar with, with, being a little familiar with JavaScript really does help uh, if you're implementing this in your own app. If you're using FM starting point, though, it's really all there, and you can make, a, make small customizations to it. I, I don't really, I, I'm not a, an expert on JavaScript. I just took this library that Richard found and we implemented it in FileMaker. And so it, knowing JavaScript uh, or being a little familiar with it helps. I, I can look at the JSON and understand what's going on. And so that, that does help, but, the, but, but we're using a library that's already built. I wouldn't go back into the JavaScript and make customizations to a, the JavaScript itself. Yeah, it's just a matter of how deep you want to go. So that's why I want to mm -hmm. comment on that, right? Because doing JavaScript at a very high level, like a very senior level, is a totally different job description than being a FileMaker developer. FileMaker developer is about understanding FileMaker backwards and forwards, and then dabbling in the peripheral stuff like API interaction with PayPal or uh, interaction with a web viewer, right, back and forth, because the technology has gotten better. So what happens if we make a change, like, can we come over here and make a change, Calvin, on this? Leave this alone. Leave the, leave the calendar alone. Make yeah. the change over here. 
and then let's just say uh, we'll pick it here now. Click, and then we yeah, do, spread that even farther if you would. Do that even uh, push it. Yeah, we go. Okay, great. Now we're gonna uh, we're gonna say continue. Okay. Now when he ran the continue there, you did a you asked to do a refresh. You automatically triggered a refresh mm -hmm. over here because it yes. basically the web viewer. Remember the web viewer at the end of the day and FileMaker at the end of the day don't talk to each other automatically. So when we when we when he did a movement over here, right? We it made a data change on the JavaScript side. JavaScript ran a function that calls back to FileMaker says, "Hey, update this record." Okay. When we make an edit over here, if you made the edit and then didn't run a refresh over here, you'd have a difference of data here versus what you had over here. So we have to tell it to kind of do this refresh, tell the web viewer to do a refresh. Yeah. Right? So if you see here, I just committed the record and nothing, nothing changed. changed. Right. I, so you, I, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. As soon great. as I close the window, then it, it has this on uh, layout exit trigger that sees if there's a change and runs the refresh for um, for the calendar. All right, so David Angel says the code reference in the web viewer object is stored in a global field. So why don't you go back to where you were? Because I wanted to, I wanted to get this part in everyone's heads, right? Mm -hmm. You want to go back to the preferences and starting point and kind of show people what we have. So this is starting point over here, right? Yeah. And these are these are this is a layout. These are tabs. These are are these text fields or they're global fields? What are these? Yeah, so these are text fields and at least one of them is global. So here is our basic settings for the, and this is a JSON, uh, this is JSON that we're looking at. And this is gives the settings to, uh, to the calendar. So if I make a change here, so let's change this locale, which from EN for English to ES for Spanish, and now when we close it, we'll see that everything changed to Spanish. Okay. Um, the, uh, so, so that's what, you know, I'm gonna change that back. But <laughs> that's, that's what this is, this is doing. Events, this is a global field where we're saving the event information that's being displayed in the calendar itself. And you, we have it broken out so you, it's more legible than just a single line of code. And you can see that we've got uh, a follow-up call CEO and these are happening. Uh, in May, so we're not seeing them right now. If we scroll down, we'll see the walk the dog, feed the dog. Uh, so all this dog. data came out of over here, right? I, I, I'm not mm -hmm. matching these up exactly, right? But you right. get the idea. They they originate, they live here, and then mm -hmm. this communication formats them and dumps them into here on that side. Yeah, and this glo and the reason why this one needs to be global is because for different people accessing the app this data is going to be different. They're going to be doing different mm. searches and looking at different items in the calendar. We covered this the other day on multi-user mm -hmm. solutions that when you have a multi-user solution, each person has their own kind of private copy of a global field, right? Mm -hmm. And as you adjust your count, if, if it was the same field, then every time someone would switch to a day view or a week view or something over here, everyone's mm -hmm. calendars would change, right? Yeah. Oh, I want to see the calendar for... Uh, I want to see Beaver 5 conference room, not 007 conference room. And I change it, then everyone else's screens flashes and they get Beaver 5 too, right? So yeah. that's that's why globals, having them isolated is really a useful, mm -hmm. useful capability. There. Yeah, and, and so, the but this, this preference field is not global. So if you make a change here, for example, the locale, I haven't, yet had a client that wanted different people reading in different languages, though that that was definitely a possibility. So the uh, so you could change it to be global and, and reset when each person logs in to their preference. So uh, this field handles the, the callbacks between the um, the web viewer making those changes in uh, FileMaker. And then we've got some basic uh, other fields that are are holding some preferences and then here's where all the javascript library really lives so this is the open source stuff that we got from yeah. these folks over here right over here this is their their, their raw code mm -hmm. yeah and if you just if you download their 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 data then it, we just copied and pasted that right into these fields
Okay, so we're currently using 4.4. What version do they have on their website? Oh, they're at 5.1. 5.1, yeah. Yeah, so they've already moved along, right? So we periodically will update this for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And of course, you're welcome to update it too, because it, you know, once again, we're dealing with mm -hmm. free software. And so um, um, you could always update it, uh, go there and grab it, update it. So yeah, pretty straightforward. So uh, okay. Margaret, other questions that we have along the way uh, from anyone? Um, there is kind of an interesting question on Twitch. I don't know if you saw it. From yeah, I'm seeing it right now. So is there any syncing between FileMaker and CalDAV or CardDAV? Okay, there's no native. There's no native syncing with FileMaker with any calendar capability, right? Like built in, okay? So CalDAV is that open source kind of uh, a way of um, like – if you want to like have a count, this is like an on-screen calendar that you manage yourselves, right? You manage it in FileMaker. But if you wanted to go and have like Google Calendar, like pop a, a Google Calendar somewhere, um, you would use a, uh, you could code it by hand, but I would use like a plugin from 360 Works called Zulu. And then, yeah, here. And so what this is right here is a, it's integration with an external calendar and it does all this cal dev this kind of stuff over here right so um you want to we we rcc uses this internally for scheduling coaching appointments and things like that uh we actually the engineers can use google calendar and then but we manage the dates and the scheduling within a filemaker record so it's basically instead of talking to uh the built-in calendar like this this plugin here allows us to talk between um, like FileMaker data over here and then the Google Calendar, which we had over here on the right. Can you bring up the Google Calendar again over here? I don't know if you save that. There we go. So this is like a Google Calendar, right? So Cal Calvin has a meeting with a couple customers and he tracks that. And if he wanted to have it talk to FileMaker, he could do that with this plugin right here. Okay. And then sometimes people want it to appear in Google or whatever their calendar is, uh, so that it syncs with their phones elegantly and have it appear in a calendar like this so they can manage it in FileMaker. Yeah. So there's definitely reasons to have both. Yeah, so in terms of CalDAV not being supported, I think that's an open standard. I don't know anything about it being not supported. Um, I just know that in this scenario, we're not... Uh, We've got it basically that we're, you know, we're, we got HTML and JavaScript code inside of FileMaker right here. And we got FileMaker records here. We don't have to do CalDAB back and forth because we're controlling the flow of data. It's in whatever format that we want. Can you reset the starting day to Monday? I like that too for the record. Uh, I don't, yeah, so, you know, no one can see so, that, but that's, I love that. Personally, so, I think the first day of the week is Monday and then Saturday, Sunday is at the end. So. Okay, so if you go to settings and go to this area here, there's a first day zero, and you'll remember with uh, with with uh, JSON in an array, the days of the uh, number the first item in a list is called number zero. So we're saying first day is the is zero. So I can change this to one. And just save that. And now you'll see Monday is the first day of the week. Yeah. And you'll yeah. also notice that we have five days that are highlighted and then two days that are grayed out for the week and the weekend. So we can go in here and change this to, um, so we have days of week. We can, uh, so we can change, we have a few different options. You can do your business hours and select when, when they start. You'll notice if we go to week view that the business hours yeah. start at, at nine and go to five. And we can change that and say, okay, we want the business hours to start at um, nine. And I guess they were on nine. Let's, let's move it an hour and go to uh 19 we'll make them really long and we'll see and we'll see that it didn't change so let me refresh that refresh if that helps. yeah if that didn't help it so it, it, it maybe it's looking at somewhere else 19 is seven so that's what zero so that's the explanation seven. right there i think what's that 
I think that might be the explanation because it's like the day of the week explanation, but then it's like first day down there is where you actually change it. So, uh, yeah, and I, I'm not gonna. Uh, fly yeah, we're not gonna that, kill ourselves the, on this. Uh, but but it's you, a live demo, so we'd have to. Mm -hmm. uh, if it didn't update, then we'd have to chase it down. And it could be a bug. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, it's one of those deals where maybe we update the code and see if it works better. We might want to go ahead and update uh, the starting point 2022 or whatever. We could probably go mm -hmm. in and update all the uh, even the 2020 starting points. Put the new um, stuff in there. Maybe get it to yeah. Michael and have him post it. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Questions yeah. along the way about this. Anyone questions? Ruben says it's flexible. Very true. Can you change the day names to Spanish? The day names to Spanish. Well, we changed it. it we we just did a minute ago, so uh, we can go to ES and save that. And so there's our day names in Spanish. Yep, we did that all. So. And the when when somebody was complaining that they didn't like what was the Spanish words or not the Spanish words, but when, whatever language they were using, uh, they didn't like the options. So you can just jump into the uh, cap the full calendar code go to the locale and scroll through here and find the one that you're using and change and, it. and make the adjustments in here. Okay, well, yeah. I can't read Russian. That one, one of those was Russian just now. I saw that. Yeah. There's about a hundred different options. So you'd have to scroll through and figure out which one you, you're okay, updating. Cool. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Any so this, so, so this is all uh, 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 free. So there we go. I love that. Yes. Yep. yep. I like the smell of free software in the morning. Yes. So the uh, if we're we're done with that, we can move to the next step, which is customizing uh, FM starting point to put a calendar on the home screen. We're ready for yeah, that? Yeah, do that before David loses his shit, because I don't want David to lose his mind, right? So Okay. So here's FM starting point. Yep. And as much as we love Haley and my <laughs> we're okay, so we'll remove Haley. And what I'm going to start with is uh, going to layout mode and just copying this web viewer. Yeah. And we'll just paste it in here. Okay. And we'll go ahead and make it about the same size. And we'll see what that gives us. It's going to browse mode and obviously it's not working. So let's try to get it to work. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go into the relationships mm -hmm. and find uh, preferences. So here, we're, okay, this is stop, our home stop, screen. Stop, stop, stop. Why are we on preferences? Why are we on the preferences? Home, the home screen is based on preferences. So let's right. go back to layout mode and see we're starting at table uh, T14 preferences. So, so real quick for the beginners out there, understand that every layout has to be attached to a table occurrence. A table occurrence is attached to a table. And so we tried to, you know, preference, a preference table has one record in it if you build it the way we tell, tell people to build it, right? So the idea is that we did that for the home screen uh, because it had to attach to something. And it, there's a lot of logical reasons why attached to preferences. So the home screen is not attached to contacts or to projects or any of that kind of stuff. It, remember, the layout has to be, I mean, it's, it's interesting because, you know, you think about it, but you could have a layout that in an ideal world, if you're really programming, that doesn't attach to any underlying data. Uh, in other programming systems, that's the way that works. But FileMaker is kind of forced to have that. So Calvin's added it over here. What, where do we add? So we added. Yeah, so so I, we're in this table group and I added a new table occurrence assigned to calendar HTML. And I gave it a really good name. So it organizes in the table group T14L preferences calendar Cartesian. And I will grab a field and assign it. And what I wanted to make sure is in this case, I'm just going to have it as a Cartesian join. And that means that every record in the preferences table matches every record in the calendar table, but both records just have one. Both tables just have one record. So I did that and I used nice names so everything's really well organized and kept clean. Let me go ahead and say save. And now here, what I'm going to need to do is change my table occurrence that I'm using 
T14L, and there it is. And I'm going to use the same field, reference the same field, HTML count. And you could decide at this point whether or not you wanted to allow interaction with the web viewer. Maybe for a home screen, you just want people to view it. So we could turn off interaction with the web viewer to, uh, to make it read only. But I'm going to leave that on. Now we go to browse mode. And there, yeah, oh, there you go. There you go. So I, I have questions for people uh, real quick, especially on the... Uh, mm -hmm the zoom side any of you folks questions about the cartesian join we haven't really talked we talked loosely about it the other day we talked about where id contact we frequently i don't i don't use cartesians i'll say id id constant which is always a defined as a one in my system is attached to another id constant one is attached to a one that has the net same effect as this right here this is I really kind of dislike this because it's it's very abstract and floaty. And all this says, it doesn't matter what these two field, what the fields are here, what the fields are here, or what this is here. This means that any record there is equal or is connected to any record over here. And and sometimes that's abstract for people. What I sometimes will say is, this is always a one. So if I if you go and continue your thing here, do you have an ID constant over there? You don't really have yeah. one. Do you? So I. I, I never needed one in, in the calendar because we're not referencing it until now. So let me go ahead and add ID constant. Okay. Make that a calculation. Give it a value of one. Yep. And now what we'll do over here is change this from a Cartesian and say it matches to ID constant and it has to equal ID okay, constant. Okay, so now hold, 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 hold here for a second. So the other one that we had just a moment ago is a little bit abstract. Okay. It was like any, you know, any, it could be anything over here and anything over here and they're related together. That's just a little, everything we do in FileMaker is like precision. I mean, we're like talking precision, putting screws and holes and precisely screwing things together. Okay. And that other thing is like, uh, it's like, hey, use a nuke. We're, we're going to try to kill a fly with a nuclear weapon. Okay. That's great. Just kind of throw it over there somewhere and it'll work. Right. Well, yeah, but it's very imprecise. And so mentally for some people, Dimock, I'm thinking about you before you ask a question, it's hard to mentally wrap your head around that for some people. So if I say, instead say ID constant, which always equals a one, right? And that equals another field over here that always equals a one, then in your mind, a one equals a one. That is a very precise thing, yet it's the net same effect. Right. So mm -hmm. it's a matter of what your brain can process, if that makes any sense. Sorry about that. But um, I'm bringing this back to the beginner level. Sorry. Yeah. No. So so we changed it to uh, and let me just change the name so we can see that. So we changed it to ID constant and I'll say, OK, and it still works. So it's still there. I can actually I can still interact with this. Oh, so this is one thing that's you'll notice some things are broken like the the add task. So we would have to rewrite the script to work with that. Add task is actually assuming that we are starting from the calendar table. And, uh, and so, so interact. So maybe we should turn make it not interacting because if I try to move the one of these, I think it will break. So let's go ahead and try that. I'll refresh over here and you'll notice that I made it the move but it didn't work in, it didn't, it didn't talk to FileMaker. And the reason is that when we make that change, uh, FileMaker assumes that you're starting in the HTML table, the calendar table, and does a go-to related record to find the right, uh, to find the right record and not a, uh, and, and not and performing a fine because go to related records a lot faster. Okay, so real quick. So for Dave, who this was Dave's request, mm -hmm. if you want it to work, like interact and have it work on the home screen, you're going to have to go through here and make some adjustments to this script and, and QA and test this thing. If you mm -hmm. want it to just be visible and display some sort of default setting, default mm -hmm. data, right? Week, month, whatever you want to do, then you can lock it in here. And then as you, does it resize a little bit, Calvin, if you resize the window? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's looking pretty good. So 
Yeah, so uh, if it depends if you want it to if you want it to be dynamic, you're going to have to do some more work. If you don't want it to be dynamic, we're done, right? At this point. Mm -hmm. Can you mark the calendar item with an alert? Okay, can I ask a question? So Keith yeah. is the mafia boss in UK. Mm -hmm. Question is is what I would say is what kind of uh, mafia alert do you want? Do you want the beep and like blinky lights come on or what do you, what are you looking for Keith on your alert? Pop up like a what is it like in some things where you have like a little like the like a little indicator it's red and you get the count like you know something yeah, grab my attention yeah okay yeah, I feel like there was a some kind of indicator in this app maybe there isn't or in this yeah, uh, no in we've this had app. that the Michael Michael had an indicator in here but I don't know where it was at or or uh, Nick did but yeah some sort yeah, of did. indicator. Yeah, so we could definitely do some kind of indicator. And um, and so maybe one thing that I've started doing in my, uh, I don't think it's in my latest navigation thing, sample file, but what we can do is I'll use a, um, a, a, what is this called? A button bar. And let's go ahead and delete a few of these. And we'll make this about maybe eight by eight. Oh no, not 80 by 80, eight by eight. Let's give it a, remove all the padding and make it, uh, we can make it red. Let's do the, where's the fill color? Let's say the fill color is gonna be red. And the text color is gonna be white. And it's not gonna have any line. So do we see that now? Oh, let's give it some shape. So now it's a circle. Maybe we'll, we'll make it 12 by 12. That's a little bigger. And maybe we'll make the font size, maybe the font size is gonna be eight. I think that's what I was remembering. Make our font size eight. So here, and let's make it centered. It is centered, okay. So now I can put one of these maybe next to tasks and go to browse mode, see what happens. So we've got a nice That's still little, too small, but yeah, can you do is, me a favor and make it bigger? And yeah, uh, let's go ahead and make it maybe 15 by 15. Yeah, try something like that. And we'll give it the font size of 10. Yeah, at least. There we go. There we Gosh. go. Yeah, that's better. I like that. Okay, so. So, so what you could do, right now I have the five hard-coded in there, but you could have a global variable, and it, is, that's what I normally use, assigned to that button bar. And the very, every so often you can have a trigger, check how many uh, tasks a person has for the current day or that that are outstanding and have that refresh. And so the, uh, so it, it, you, you're always getting new feedback on the, on that indicator. And that's my, my client. I have a client that manages their text messages in FileMaker with a notification like that. And another that manages, um, all right. Internal messages. And it's really helpful. So for those of you wondering if you want cal a calendar help with a project, uh, Calvin is probably our leading, calendar person at rcc so if you want to get with him and uh get some calendar help um he's kind of a senior engineer so he's a guy that you don't really get half off on but yeah he's available if you want to send uh either send us an email a support at rcconsulting.com or send an email to calvin.moseyman if you want to spell it try to spell that you can do that or just send it to support and we'll forward it to him well, you'd have to figure out like what sets the alarm off. Like what, what is the alert? I mean, I guess we're talking about Keith says he, it's an alert. The alert would be if something expires or it's coming up. I mean, you have to figure out what the criteria for an alert even is, right? Yeah. And you could sit. So usually I use a, uh, uh, what is it called? XQSQL uh, calculation to generate that, but you could just pop a new window and say, go to this layout, enter find mode, perform the find. And then the found set becomes the number that you use for that indicator. And with hiding conditions, if the number is zero, you can have the, you can have the it disappear. indicator disappear. 
Yeah. If it's nothing, empty. What would happen if you updated the calendar using the update button? Would it automatically update the static calendar? Uh, okay, so you're saying the refresh button over here. So yes, it, at this point, if you if if I wanted to implement a calendar on the home screen, I'd probably have it. Uh, I I probably not. I, I would limit how much interaction there would be with it right. and maybe just show the current day. But right now, any change that's made here is going to change over there as well. So we're seeing the same data in both areas. So you'll notice I don't have these fields, these that's selector global, fields. But that's a global, right? Right there. So it's not affecting other people, mm -hmm. just your own session, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's, that, it's a, that might be okay, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. And, but I guess my, my point is that when I go back to the homes, I might look at something in a couple months, or I guess when I'm looking months in the future, I, it might not, if I select a date, it's going to switch. But when I go back to the home screen, I might want to only see what's today. So you could have an on layout uh, enter trigger that would refresh the home screen to go back to the current day and the day view. So uh, it, it, it's really flexible. You'd have lots of options on what you want to do. So that's what's going on with that. Uh, I will catch all you folks tomorrow. Be here, be square. See you then. Catch you later.